Good afternoon. I call this meeting to order. A quorum is present. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. Pursuant to committee rule four and house rule 11 clause 2H4, the chair announces that he may postpone further proceedings today on the question of approving any measure or matter or adopting an amendment on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered. Before I proceed, I'd like to go over some items for our remote hearing. First, if you are experiencing connectivity issues, please make sure you or your staff contact our designated technical support so these issues can be resolved immediately. Members participating remotely must continue to remain visible on camera for the duration of their participation in the hearing unless they experience connectivity issues or other technical problems that render the member unable to fully participate on camera. It is committee policy that members participating remotely will remain muted when not recognized, just like turning your microphone on and off during an in-person hearing. This is out of courtesy to all members on the committee and so that background noise does not interfere with another member who is recognized to speak. You are recognized, when you are recognized, you will need to unmute your microphone and pause for two to three seconds before speaking so that your words are captured on the live stream. In the event of a recorded vote, members are encouraged to state their name first, then proceed to render his or her vote. By doing so, this will give the cameras a chance to locate who is speaking. Without objection, members will be recognized in order of seniority during any follow-up debate on amendments. This will make it easier for me to ensure all members participating have an opportunity to be recognized. If you wish to have a document inserted into the record, please ask for unanimous consent and have your staff email documents to veteransaffairs.hearings at mail.house.gov. It will be uploaded in, uh, into the committee document repository. Please also use this email to submit any amendments that have not been previously submitted. Does any member have a question about the procedures for today's meeting? Hearing none, we will proceed. I wanna thank you all for being here. We have two orders of business today. First, we will handle some committee organization matters, and then we will immediately proceed to our markup to consider legislation as directed by Senate Concurrent Resolution 14. Today, we welcome, two, uh, we welcome a new member to our committee, Representative Jake Elzey of Texas's sixth district, the institution, and more importantly, the family of uh, the late representative Ron Wright suffered from his loss due to a tragic and untimely death from COVID-19. My heart goes out to former representative Wright's family and to all families who have lost loved ones in the pandemic that continues to ravage our nation and the world. We are honored to welcome representative Elsie to replace representative Wright in Congress and we welcome him to the committee. Representative Elsie is a graduate of the United States Naval, Committee, uh, Naval Academy at Annapolis and served the nation with distinction as a Navy pilot for 20 years, deploying nine times throughout his service with tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. He is the recipient of two Bronze Stars and eight Air Medals. Representative Elsie, your background gives you incredible perspective that will be an asset to this committee as we work to serve veterans. Thank you for your service and for continuing that service in Congress and as a member of our committee. In addition to assigning Representative Elzey to a subcommittee, we will also be making a change to the Democratic membership of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee. Representative Sablon, in his usual gracious and selfless manner, has overcommitted himself with committee assignments and needs to step away from this subcommittee. As he is always the first to step up and fill any need in service to this committee and veterans. We're happy Mr. Sablon will remain in his other assignments. In turn, Representative Underwood, a deeply committed public servant 
and great asset to this committee has volunteered to join the oversight and investigations committee. I know her membership there will be valued. And I thank Representative Underwood for her taking on this role. With that, I now recognize Ranking Member Boss for any remarks that he may have. Ranking Member Boss, I recognize you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I want to extend a warm welcome to uh, Jake Elsey. You know, Congressman Elsey, our commander to his fellow sailors, aviators, and uh, graduate of Naval Academy. Uh, he spent 20 years in uniform as a fighter pilot. He developed, he, he deployed nine times, including five combat tours and, and served in both Afghanistan and Iraq. He also served as a commissioner uh, of the Texas Veterans Commission. That means he knows the challenges and the opportunities that veterans have faced over the last 20 years. He also knows the anger and heartache that they've experienced over the last month, which watching the utter failure and mismanagement of the Afghanistan withdrawal. Veterans have an incredible ally, advocate and asset in Congress, Congressman Elsie. He is one of our own. I am grateful to him for bringing his experience and expertise to this committee. I look forward to working alongside with him to serve our fellow veterans and their families. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank you, Ranking Member Boss, and I now recognize General Bergman for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the resolution assigning Representative Elsie to the Subcommittee on Disability Assistance and Memorial Affairs. Thank you, General Bergman. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, the, all the opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is approved. Welcome, Commander, to the Veterans Affairs Committee. I now recognize Chairman Pappas uh, for two minutes. Well, thank you, Chairman Takano. I just wanted to echo your words of gratitude for Mr. Sablon and his participation on our ONI subcommittee. He was a constant presence, even from afar, and always asked insightful questions. We appreciate his efforts, and I'm pleased that uh, Representative Underwood will be taking his place on our subcommittee. She's obviously no stranger to the work of this committee or our oversight responsibilities. So a hearty thank you to uh, Mr. Sablon and a welcome to Ms. Underwood. I yield back. Thank you, Chairman Pappas. Vice Chairman Levin, I recognize you for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I ask unanimous consent that Representative Sablon be permitted to step down from the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee and Representative Underwood be assigned to the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee. Thank you, uh, Mr. Levin, and without objection, so ordered. With that, business, uh, with that business concluded, we will now move on from our business meeting to the full committee markup. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. Today's markup comes at a trying time for our nation and veterans. On Saturday, we reflected on the 20th anniversary of one of the most tragic days in American history, which also saw the start of a 20 year war, the effects of which we are still struggling to understand and mitigate to this day. We have all heard from veterans who are trying to process what they experienced and sacrificed for. What I can tell you is that for those who served, your service mattered to me personally, to your country, to your fellow service members. I thank you for your service. And if you need support during this time, we are here and we care. Please reach out to the Veterans Crisis Line to receive free confidential support 24 seven at 1-800-273-8255 and press one or text 838-255, or you can chat online at veteranscrisisline.net forward slash chat. Mental health and other costs of war are very much on my mind. And whether you agree with the way we as a nation went to war or how we ended it, we must all recognize that the cost of war does not end when military operations cease and our service members leave the war zone. 
Our path to America's veterans continues long after individual conflicts as we ease the transition to civilian life and ensure veterans can access the care and benefits they've earned and deserve. With this sacred pact on my mind, I want to note to the other members of this committee that I have begun discussions with the Senate on a package of mental health bills. And I know there are several bills that have been introduced in the House that have some great ideas in them. This committee has focused its efforts on reducing veteran suicide for several sessions of Congress. I hope that the ranking member will collaborate with me on this package and help continue this bipartisan tradition. I've instructed my staff to move quickly on putting a draft together. There are questions about the costs of this 20 year war that we have struggled to answer since its inception. But I hope we are at least wiser about the effects as the IOU on the promises we have made comes due. We cannot deliver on our promises to veterans if we do not maintain the infrastructure that provides the care and services they have earned. And that is why we are here today. I can think of no better time for this institution to provide funding to ensure VA has the resources to fulfill the promises, the promise to care for our nation's veterans than now. And I'm pleased that today's markup will direct the $18 billion set aside for VA in President Biden's Build Back Better agenda to restore veterans' faith in VA by literally rebuilding its physical infrastructure, investing in its workforce, and providing much needed updates to support structures that serve our veterans. We know that Americans strongly support investments that serve veterans, so I'm proud to deliver on this. Over the years, chronic underfunding of VA's capital asset portfolio has left the department trying to deliver 21st century healthcare in buildings designed to serve veterans who fought in World Wars I and II. That's unacceptable. The infrastructure of these buildings is failing our veterans, and the majority of Americans agree that it is time for an update. In the last few years, under both Democratic and Republican leadership, this committee has worked to expand resources for veterans in crisis, reduce veteran suicide, expand VA access for populations of underserved veterans, and ensure veterans receive timely and high quality care. Today's legislation is directly tied to those efforts. By making a critical investment in VA, we can start rebuilding VA's capacity in terms of brick and mortar infrastructure, human capital, and the support structures that serve our nation's veterans. If we do not make these investments now, it will become increasingly difficult to deliver on the promises we've made to our veterans. President Biden's Build Back Better plan gives us the framework to do that by making serious investments in VA and finally committing resources to deliver to veterans the absolute best, most modern and inclusive care and services possible. And with that, I recognize Ranking Member Bost for his opening statement. Ranking Member. Thank you, Chairman Takano. You know, this is the second time this year that our committee has received reconciliation instructions. And reconciliation may be the answer to weak and ineffective Democrat control, but it is not the answer to the problems facing our country, our economy, and our veterans. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Our constituents did not send us here to give only a passing glance at their hard earned dollars go out, going out the door. Yet for the second time in eight months, this is exactly what the Democrat majority in DC is doing. The bill we are considering today hands VA $18 billion. That is in addition to the almost $40 billion that the VA received from for COVID relief, tens of billion dollars of which has not been spent or touched as of yet. It is also in addition to the $270 billion in VA base budget, the largest base budget VA has ever received. This bill was released on Saturday. 
giving members only 48 hours outside of normal business hours to review it. That is unacceptable. Veterans are a wise investment. Veterans are also taxpayers. Veterans deserve support. Veterans also deserve more than wasteful government spending and more than any unnecessary and partisan reconciliation bill that they will pay for in higher taxes and skyrocket in inflation and that their grandchildren will still be paying for after they're gone. VA has serious infrastructure issues. Republicans worked with Democrats in 2018 to pass a law to fix them. That law is the Asset and In Infrastructure Review or the AIR Act. VA has spent three years collecting the data that the department and the AIR Commission will use to fix the VA medical facilities to better serve veterans. We are awaiting AIR Commission nominations from the White House. Making major investments in VA's infrastructure outside of AIR would be a waste of time and taxpayers' money. That is not to mention that this that we sit here today while veterans are in crisis. Two days ago was the 20th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attack. That tragic day led to two decades of war that veterans and their families have borne the brunt of. Two weeks ago, those same veterans and families were left reeling as 13 of our own were killed during the Biden administration's failure in Afghanistan. Hundreds of Americans have been abandoned in Afghanistan by this president. Many more Afghan allies, the men and women, the veterans who served alongside of our own and used they and they saved their life, used to save their life have been abandoned in Afghanistan by this president. Veterans, particularly those who served in Afghanistan, have been left questioning whether their service mattered. Families, particularly those who lost loved ones in Afghanistan, have been left questioning whether their losses matter. The pain, grief, and trauma that, is, that this is, was, has caused will leave scars that could last and will last lifetimes. We should be here today discussing that fact. We should be laser focused on making sure veterans and families have what they need to heal. That we are not doing that is a deep shame. The Democrat majority in DC should have to answer for it. Several Republicans and I wrote to Chairman Takano two weeks ago to ask for a hearing on how the Afghanistan crisis was impacting our veterans. I wrote to him again last week asking that we use the time to have we have today for that hearing or that type of hearing. Our request has gone unanswered. Make no mistake, today's markup is nothing but a distraction. This reconciliation package is unnecessary and I will oppose it. However, the committee will report text to comply with the instructions. My fellow Republicans and I offer several amendments today to support veterans and families suffering from Biden administration's failure in Afghanistan making smart investments in VA infrastructure and saving taxpayer dollars. I hope our amendments are adopted. Then I hope we can start putting veterans and taxpayers before liberal wish list and partisan politics. And finally, grapple with the havoc the crisis in Afghanistan is re re wreaking on our veterans communities. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for the time and I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member Bost. Um, before we proceed, I'd just like to take a, a minute or two just to address a couple of points that uh, the Ranking Member has, has raised. I have been a little perplexed by the multiple letters I've received from the Ranking Member and some of his colleagues about holding a hearing on mental health. As the Ranking Member well knows, a hearing on mental health issues has been in the works for weeks. And in fact, I hope to hold that hearing on September 9th but the ranking member said he was not available, so to accommodate his schedule, I agreed to move the hearing to September 22nd. As is customary, the ranking member was copied on the invitation to VA on August 25th, 
prior to receiving the letter he signed, uh, led by Dr. Murphy, requesting a hearing on the topic. And he was copied on all subsequent invitations that have been sent to other experts and stakeholders to testify at this hearing. I therefore, I'm a little confused as to why these letters were asking for something the ranking member knew full well we were already planning to do. Additionally, my staff have been requesting the ranking member's staff, from the ranking member staff, to provide input on witnesses for this hearing, uh, for the, for the uh, hearing on, on, uh, on mental health, uh, as well as today, uh, has not, and as of today, has not been provided. Uh, at any rate, the hearing, this hearing, uh, the hearing on mental health will take place next week, and I look forward to that discussion. I'm also in agreement that the recent withdrawal of military forces from Afghanistan is affecting veterans, and I have made it a priority. My staff and I have been in regular contact with the VA to ensure that they are proactive in their outreach, and we've been urging veterans to connect with one another and to take advantage of all of the resources available. I think uh, we have far, uh, we have uh, more important work to do. Uh, uh, and uh, I think we have more important work to do right now than limit our discussions only to Afghanistan. Conducting oversight is essential, but there is a limit to that. And at some point we must do more than ask questions. We have to be decisive. Taking action means that we must ensure these important resources are available working and adequately meeting veterans' needs. And that cannot happen if we don't fund the critical infrastructure needed to house and support them. If there are no fatalities and no one to staff them, how can we provide these services? How can VA veterans meet, uh, how, can veteran, VA, uh, how can VA meet veterans' needs with facilities that have aged to the point that they can no longer safely provide effective care and benefits? We have backlogged lists of facilities that will do the very thing uh, that you are talking about, provide mental health services. And if we don't fund them, where will veterans go? And if we don't try to address the provider shortage, who will provide the care? We must dispel with the argument that Congress is incapable of dealing with more than one issue at a time, and that is precisely our job. We must talk about mental health issues related to Afghanistan, and we will at our full committee hearing next week. But today, we will vote to fund the resources and infrastructure needed to support veterans uh, of the past, present, and future. Veterans from all conflicts, not just those who served in Afghanistan. This committee can support veterans and fund VA infrastructure. It is not a question of either or. And today's proceedings are not a distraction. They are precisely the point of what we need to get done. So the committee will now proceed to the consideration of the, uh, uh, of the uh, Committee on Veterans Affairs legislative proposal to comply with the reconciliation directive included in section 2002 of the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2022. The clerk will please designate the committee print. Committee print, providing for reconciliation. The text was circulated in advance pursuant to committee rules without objection. The first reading is dispensed with and without objection. The committee print is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. I now, I now recognize myself to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute. The clerk will designate the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered by Mr. DeCano of no, California. The amendment will be considered as read and considered as original text for amendment as open to amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for five minutes and I urge my colleagues to support the ANS to the committee print. As I noted earlier, the Build Back Better agenda includes resources to invest in our veterans and the infrastructure that serves them. I want to point out the key elements of the recommendations for those investments. First, we provide $15.2 billion in resources for VA's capital investment portfolio. This is the brick and mortar investment that will allow VA to replace aging facilities and make improvements to existing ones. If we want VA to deliver 21st century care, we need to ensure VA has 21st century infrastructure. Second, we provide $455 million to VA to invest in a veteran-centric enhanced use lease program. This is a resource to provide additional services to veterans beyond supportive housing, 
and we'll do more by creating additional resources using underutilized spaces. Third, we are providing $1.8 billion for major medical facility leases. This is a key investment and one that I believe will truly impact veterans, including many veterans in your districts. I'm elated that we can include this investment in this package because this will truly improve access to care for many veterans. Fourth, when we talk about investments in VA, we do not spend enough time talking about human capital as an investment. We need the staff and clinicians to provide the world-class care we have promised to veterans. And this investment is a top priority of mine. And this is why I am so pleased that we could include something that I and many of you have been advocating for for some time. In this package, we have, uh, we have included an investment of $375 million in VA's statutory mission to conduct an education and training program for health professional students and residents by authorizing VA to increase the number of health professional health professions residency positions at its medical facilities by up to 700 slots over seven years. This will truly be a meaningful investment. Fifth, we are providing VA with resources of $150 million to address the backlog of unscanned veteran records. With this investment, it is VA's intention to have veteran records available on day one of the receipt of a claim at VBA. With over 1,000 claims impacted by pandemic-related backlog of records requests, this will have a real impact on thousands of veterans each year. Sixth, and finally, we have provided the VA Office of Inspector General with $15 million to carry out enhanced oversight of these investments, which will greatly aid us in our own oversight of VA's efforts to carry out the investments that we are directing them to do. This is a straightforward, necessary down payment on VA's infrastructure. It will directly benefit veterans. These are investments we must make if we want VA to continue to deliver the care and services we have asked it to provide to veterans. So I urge you to join me in supporting this effort. Thank you. Does any other member wish to be heard on the ANS? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, hold on, Mr. Love, before we consider I, amendment, I wish to be heard. anyone who wishes to be heard. Yes, I do. Sablon. Mr. Sablon, you're recommended. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for holding this hearing on and for all the work that's gone into the ANS that you have introduced today. Mr. Chairman, I must say with deep regret, and um, I prefer that I don't have to, but I have to, that my veterans here in the Marianas are not being served by this huge package. Uh, last week, I met with a veteran uh, from the Mountain Division who had received my cousin, actually, whose house was one house away from my house when I grew up, who had received four purple, five purple hearts for wounded received in Iraq and Afghanistan. He said he's back home, but that it's unfortunate that he still has to go back to the mainland for services that he, for medical services and uh, that he needs to receive because those services are not available here. Again, I must say, Mr. Chairman, with all due respect to you and to everyone who's worked hard on this, the Marianas doesn't even have a bed center. We don't have a CBOC. We have a, a system here that, that where veterans fall through the cracks to get to their appointments in Honolulu. Because uh, a different office needs to prepare the travel, a different office needs to make the appointment, and a different office needs to um, you know, do whatever it is that's done. I will support your AMS, Mr. Chairman, but I have to say that I am truly heartbroken in the lack of consideration that veterans based on their Jeep code are treated differently in our country. And I yield back. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Sablon. Uh, and of course, I will continue to work with you uh, and to work with the VA to address um, the needs of the people of the Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, does any other member wish to address the, uh, the to be heard on the ANS before I uh, call on uh, members for amendments? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Levin, uh, I uh, recognize you. Thank you, Chairman Takano. Uh, I do have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Levin. Of the amendment will be dispensed with. Uh, Representative Levin is recognized for five minutes to speak in support of his amendment. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I strongly support the $15.2 billion investment in VA owned infrastructure included in the ANS. And I appreciate your inclusion of language requiring VA to take climate resiliency and the needs of underserved areas and populations into consideration when distributing these funds. My amendment would also require VA to take into consideration all infrastructure needs of its facilities, including needs not included in VA's long range capital plan. The ANS gives VA significant flexibility in how to spend the $15.2 billion we are providing for infrastructure. VA has indicated that it will likely distribute funding using its existing infrastructure project lists included in VA's annual budget request. According to VA's Office of Asset Enterprise Management, the long range capital plan, which is part of the budget request and outlines how VA will address infrastructure gaps in the next 10 years, is required to address all infrastructure gaps across all of VA's facilities. However, in uh, conversations with the San Diego VA, I learned that Vision 22 arbitrarily restricts the number of projects that each facility can submit during the planning process. As a result, many urgent needs are excluded from the long range capital plan. This discrepancy may affect facilities in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, and elsewhere across the country where visions are diverging from national VA policy. It places these facilities at a disadvantage compared to others and undermines VA's ability to equitably allocate infrastructure funding. However, I was glad to receive a commitment from VA today that they will address these issues, and I am very grateful for their collaboration. With that understanding, I will withdraw my amendment, but I look forward to working with the committee and VA to improve its infrastructure planning processes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Levin, uh, and I appreciate um, the skill uh, and uh, uh, the skill and consideration and care that you offered your amendment, and I also withdraw the amendment. Um, I believe uh, uh, the way that in which you uh, uh, proceeded uh, achieved uh, a very important end. Uh, so I commend you for advocating not only for the, the constituents of your district, uh, but for those of us who, uh, who who represent constituents all throughout the Southwest. You've all done us a great, great favor. Uh, on both sides now, I might add, uh, it wasn't just about Democratic constituencies, it was also Republican constituencies. So you you, uh, you proceeded in a manner which uh, improved, I think, the process within VA uh, for all. So I appreciate uh, the spirit in which your amendment was offered and also withdrawn. Um, is there further, uh, is there further debate on the amendment? Uh, further debate on the, uh, uh, any, anyone else that, uh, would like to be recognized for an amendment. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Representative Cawthorn. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, the clerk will, the clerk will, uh, the clerk will. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, ring, ring Mr. Chairman. Point of order, we want to make sure that, that so uh, Mr. Levin's uh, amendment was withdrawn, correct? Ranking member, the, the, he, he did withdraw the amendment, and uh, so it's not, it, it, yeah, it's withdrawn. We're good to go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Cawthorn. Add at the end the following. The well, reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Representative Cawthorn is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Two things before I begin. One, I'd like to welcome Commander Elsie to this committee. Uh, we're very excited to have you. Uh, but two, actually, Chairman DeCano, I, I would like to echo your concerns that you spoke of in the very beginning about the mental health of our veterans. 
Uh, I've never been, I've never had the honor of getting to serve our great nation, but I, I do know what it is to be disabled. I know what it is to feel like it's incapable. Uh, I'm incapable of being in charge of my own life. And that is actually why I am so excited to bring this amendment up because I believe this will help the mental health issues that we have going on in our country right now with our veterans. My amendment to the ANS would expand VA's automobile allowance and adaptive equipment program to allow eligible service connected veterans the ability to acquire a second adopted vehicle 10 years after receiving their first grant. Under current law, the VA provides severely disabled veterans with the ability to receive a one time payment of 21,488 for purchasing a vehicle to be adapted to specifically meet the veterans needs. I will tell you having a, having adapted two vehicles in my own it, on my own, I will tell you this is a, a very low amount of money to be able to do that. With younger veterans ending their program, we cannot continue to expect one vehicle to last a lifetime. And that is why I've introduced the amendment today. My amendments built upon the program and gives the freedom to those severely disabled heroes to replace their adaptive automobile after 10 years, which I think is completely acceptable. And this amendment is based off the text of HR 1361, which is a bipartisan proposal introduced by our colleague and former member of this committee, Mr. Muser, along with Mr. Trone and 31 of the co-sponsors. I do want to take, thank the Paralyzed Veterans of America and the Wounded Warrior Project for bringing this issue before the committee and helping draft this very important amendment. Paralyzed Veterans of America said it best in their testimony before the subcommittee on economic opportunity earlier this year in support of a second adaptive auto. They, they, they said, and I quote, for an individual living with a disability, having freedom and independence boosts mental health. Relying on others for everything, especially transportation, can be frustrating, leaving veterans feeling hopeless and lowering their self-worth. Having access to an adaptive vehicle allows veterans to feel stronger, build inner confidence and pride in their ability to maintain their health. They can then meet work and family obligations and attend community engagements. And now that's the end of the quote. And I think we can all agree that providing for our most severely disabled veterans is one of the most bipartisan topics in the Congress. And helping provide this tra transportation increases self-worth and independence, which will help the uh, mental health that you brought up earlier, Chairman Connell. We should be investing in their success now instead of paying for some construction project that if the VA really needs, will literally take years to come to fruition. I urge all of my colleagues to support my amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute and help these disabled veterans take command of their life again so that they may have a better mental health situation and may live better lives. With that, I yield back. All right, thank you, uh, Representative Cawthorn. Um, I laudable as uh, as uh, the intent of your amendment is. I must urge opposition to the Cawthorn amendment. I agree with the need to fix the auto adaptability grant uh, grant program, which is why I am the co lead on Representative uh, Fletcher Carr's for Vets Act. However, this. Uh, amendment would drain over $2 billion from our medical centers, which is the entire reason for the underlying legislation. If the gentleman truly wants to fix the auto, uh, fix the auto adaptability program, I urge him to join me on HR 3304, the CARS for Vets Act. VA has told us that they needed to revamp the infrastructure we depend on to serve our <coughs> veterans, which is why I urge opposition to this amendment. Uh, is there any other member who wishes to speak on the Cawthorn Amendment? Uh, if not, the question is on the amendment by Representative Cawthorn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. 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 Uh, the no's have it. And the opinion of the chair and the amendment is not agreed to without objection the motion to reconsider Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we ask ask for a roll call please uh ranking member uh calls for a, rec a, a roll call uh is there a sufficient second 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 and second pursuant to committee rule four proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed uh I now uh, recognize uh, Dr. Miller Meeks. Mr. Chairman, a, a point of order, um, if I can. Members do need to be visible on the screen in order to vote. I think we're, we're running a little short right now. So 
uh, just just a reminder, if I could, for for the ranking member, uh, the point of order is uh, is uh, correct. Uh, the, the, general, the ranking member is correct. Members do need to be visible. Uh, we do need to uh, demonstrate um, a, uh, a quorum. Uh, and so um, I do call upon members to uh, turn on their cameras and be visible. All right, so uh, Dr. Miller Meeks, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mrs. Miller Meeks. Add at the end the following. Uh, for the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with, and Representative Miller Meeks is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute it does, is designed to help grow our economy and put veterans back to work. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Trump administration had built one of the strongest economies in the history of the country and veteran unemployment was at near record lows. While I'm pleased to see that veteran unemployment has dropped from a peak of 11.5% in April of 2020, there are unfortunately still 303,000 unemployed veterans as of last month. My amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute would help address this issue by expanding access to the successful Vet Tech pilot program. This is a five-year pilot program that was originally passed in the Henry W. Colmary GI Bill Improvement Act in 2017 and was authored and championed by Republican Leader McCarthy. The pilot program authorizes funding for veterans to attend innovative information technology programs like coding boot camps and other short-term training by using GI style benefits. The program also utilizes a unique funding mechanism for tuition and fee payments where the training provider is not fully paid until the veteran is employed in the IT sector. That is the type of true accountability for taxpayer dollars we should all support. It is clear that the Vet Tech is a successful program. Through the end of August, VA has received over 47,000 applications for the program and has funded 3,417 participants with a graduation rate of 89%. Of those who graduated, 72% found meaningful employment with an average starting salary of over 58,000 a year. I think we can all agree that there are not too many federal job programs that produce those types of positive results. While Congress expanded the yearly funding for this program from 15 million to 45 million last year, there are thousands of veterans who are eligible for this program, but will not be able to receive funding if we do not authorize additional funds. Despite the efforts by this committee and the House, the Vet Tech program ran out of funding last month, and now new participants must wait until October to enroll in this successful program. My amendment would ensure this program is never hampered by funding challenges again by increasing the annual funding for this program to $125 million. This would allow thousands more eligible veterans to attend training and help them attain a job in the lucrative IT field. This $125 million request matches the request by the VA to adequately fund this program to ensure veteran success. It would also give assurances to the program providers that they will not be left out to dry when funding is exhausted. This is a sensible amendment and should be easily supported by both sides of the aisle. I ask that members support my amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Is there a discussion on the Miller-Meeks amendment? Uh, Mr. Gallego, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank Rep. Miller-Meeks for her amendment and for her work with me on the Vet Tech program issues. Unfortunately, I must urge opposition to this amendment. Earlier this year, this committee already passed this legislation, my bill HR 2878, through the House to accomplish a similar extension of the Vet Tech program to what this amendment proposes. I was very happy to work with Representative Miller-Meeks to include her amendment in that bill during our May 4th markup to extend the Vet Tech program for an additional three years with full funding. In order to further support Vet Tech, I urge my colleagues to join me in asking Republican senators to pass our bill, H.R. 2878, which they are currently blocking. However, passing this amendment today only takes away money from much needed VA improvements to accomplish something the House has already done. For these reasons, I urge opposition to this amendment and I yield back. Thank you, Representative Gallego. Is there further discussion on the Miller Meeks amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment by Miller Meeks. All those in favor will say aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. All those opposed, all those opposed will say no. 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 Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to without objection. Sure. My apologies, Chair Takano. I was just going to ask for a recorded vote. Oh, you don't need to apologize for that. Um, uh, well, uh, is there a sufficient second? Aye. Yeah, second, second. Second. Uh, there being a sufficient second pursuant to Committee Rule 4, further proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. I now uh, call upon uh, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the amendment to the nature of the substitute of the desk. Clerk will report. To <laughs> amendment to the amendment in the nature of the substitute offered by Mr. Moore. Representative Moore is recognized for five minutes to speak in support of his amendment. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and members. My amendment to the ANS would permanently extend the successful vet tech pilot program. This is a program that provides GI Bill style benefits to veterans to obtain training at coding boot camps and other high tech programs. Cawthorns had interrupted Chair Takano. <laughs> this pilot program was created in 2017. It was authored and championed by Leader McCarthy, as many of you may know. The program has a 89% graduation rate and even a 72% placement rate. This success is due to the unique way the program is structured where schools are not paid the full amount of the tuition and fees until the student finds a job. We've heard from one student, Louis Bowe, who credits the vet tech for empowering him to be able to obtain his dream job as a machine learning engineer with Lockheed Martin. Martin in his state of here, I quote him, he says, vet tech gave me the baseline skills I needed to start this process while not draining my GI Bill or my savings. I'm so grateful that I was able to take part in the program and I'm certain I would not have had the same success without it. I hope that this opportunity would be offered to veterans in the future in order to secure jobs in a growing market." End of quote. The Department of Labor predicts that there will be a 30% be increase in job opportunities in the IT sector over the next 10 years with median salary for these jobs exceeding 100,000 a year. We should be doing what we can to ensure that veterans like Lewis have the training they need to get ahead in a growing industry. My amendment would help achieve this goal by permanently expanding the vet tech program with an authorization cap of 125 million a year. This is the funding level the VA believes is necessary to meet the demand for this popular program. I urge all my colleagues to support my amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to help employ veterans in this growing and lucrative industry. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, with that, I'll yield back. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, does anyone wish to um, address Mr. Moore's amendment? Mr. Gallego, you're recognized for five minutes. All right, Mr. Gallego, you're muted. Could you unmute? You're still muted. Oh, there you are. Okay, go ahead. We're working now? Yes. Okay, great. And I, and I apologize. I'm, I seem like I'm repeating myself. Again, like my previous uh, uh, amendment, uh, I apologize, my previous bill was uh, very similar uh, to this. And I again asked and urge opposition to the Moore Amendment. Uh, it passed on a previous uh, bipartisan manner uh, and it will uh, has already passed the House and is on its way to the Senate. So at this point, the best thing we could do is to actually ask the Senate to act. And it's the Republican senators that are blocking this uh, at this point. And I urge everybody on this committee, both Democrats and Republicans, to please continue to urge them to let this go to the floor. Thank you. Uh, I yield back. Thank you, Representative Gallego. Uh, is there further discussion on the amendment, on Mr. Moore's amendment? If not, the question on the amendment by Representative Moore uh, is before us. All those in favor of Mr. Moore's amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. In the amendment, Mr. Chairman Takano, I, I would like to request a recorded vote, please, sir. Uh, is there a second? I second. Yes. There being a sufficient second, uh, the uh, pursuant to uh, uh, committee rule four, further proceedings on the amendment are postponed. Uh, Mr. Rosendale, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I have an amendment to 
the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, the clerk will uh, uh, will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Rosendale of Montana. Add at the end the following. Now, for the, uh, the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Representative Rosendale is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Thanks so much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, my amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute would rescind or reallocate three separate pots of money in the American Rescue Plan that the VA simply cannot spend. These funds may have been well, well intentioned, but if they cannot be used for beneficial purpose, they should not be left on the books. First, the bill appropriated $100 million for the supply chain modernization. VA decided this meant purchasing the DMLSS, Supply Chain Management Software, from the Department of Defense. Unfortunately, they are telling a story that we all have become too familiar with. This project has barely gotten off the ground after three years. The software is only in use at one facility in North Chicago, and the VA recently lost a lawsuit which invalidated the original purpose for the buying DMLSS. Thankfully, this $100 million has not been touched and it should be returned to the treasury immediately. Second, there was $80 million appropriated to a new emergency leave fund for VA employees who run out of sick leave during the pandemic. That expires in September of 22. This fund has been in place for nearly six months, and according to the VA's reporting, not a single dollar has been spent. When the fund expires, its remaining balance, again, should go back to the Treasury, leaving appropriate dollars lying around with no authorized purpose invites big government mischief and abuse. Finally, the American Rescue Plan created a $1 billion fund to reimburse veterans co-pays during the pandemic. Copays are never charged for service-connected care. This fund expires on September 30th, 2021, 17 days from now. According to the VA's reporting, just under $240 million has been paid out. My amendment would transfer the balance of the fund as of October 1 to medical services and community care in equal amounts. The majority vastly overestimated the amount of co-pays to be reimbursed. I think the most effective thing to do at this point is to redirect the remaining dollars into direct patient care. I voted against the American Rescue Plan, again, because it was stuffed with unnecessary and wasteful spending. And I believe I have been proven right by the billions of dollars that rem remain untouched even six months later. However, even if you supported the act, I hope we can address these three examples of excess. We can be fiscally responsible and provide our veterans with the highest quality of care by properly redirecting these funds. I urge all members to support my amendment. Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Rosendale. Uh, does any member wish to speak to the amendment offered by Mr. Rosendale? Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Kapter, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, with uh, sincere regard for my friend, Congressman uh, Rosendale, um, and his desire to try to make the system work better, I must uh, rise in opposition to the Rosendale Amendment because primarily uh, much of what is contained in the gentleman's amendment would occur automatically under existing law. Let me also offer that we very much appreciate the oversight uh, that the technology modernization and um, oversight and investigation subcommittees have done on supply chain modernization. It is clear to all that VA does have a long way to go and on that we agree. However, defunding programs that are still being executed is not what this legislation is focused on. We are here to make infrastructure investments. Uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs has not requested amendments to funding for co-pays and has indicated that all funds will be obligated by the end of this fiscal year. 
The VA uh, has also not requested technical amendments to the leave provisions. And again, this amendment does nothing to address infrastructure that will serve veterans. If there are additional needs with co-pays or with leave, the committee surely can address them through an authorization extension uh, in the extenders package. And for these reasons, um, uh, and again, with respect for the gentleman, I urge opposition. Thank you, Representative Caster, a captor. Uh, are there any other members who wish to address uh, the Rosendale Amendment? Uh, if not, the question is on the amendment by Representative Rosendale. All those in favor of the Rosendale Amendment say aye. 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 All opposed say no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Rosendale? Could I request a recorded vote, please? Uh, you can. Uh, is there, uh, if there's a sufficient second. 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 There, uh, there is a sufficient second, and pursuant to committee rule four, proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. Uh, I now call on Mr. Mann. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, the clerk will report on the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered by Mr. Mann of Kansas. Without objection, further reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Representative Mann is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before discussing my amendment, I would like to associate myself with remarks of the ranking member and other members. This markup is a missing the needs of the moment with the current crisis in Afghanistan. Addition, I believe that to rubber stamp this funding request without additional information on how it will be spent without offsets is simply bad governing. We must stop funding our agencies to reconciliations and contrived emergencies that leave our children to pay our debts years later. And if it feels like we've been here before, it's because we have. In February of this year, this same reconciliation tactic was used by the majority to give the VA $17 billion, despite VA providing shockingly little information as to how that money would be spent. During that markup, I offered an amendment that would have increased transparency and oversight on the department by requiring the secretary to provide a detailed plan for how VA would expend the funds and report biweekly on how the funds are being spent. Additionally, my amendment required audits to be performed by the VA Inspector General and review of the Government Accountability Office after all funds were spent to ensure that taxpayer money was not wasted. During that markup, my amendment was voted down on party lines. However, Ranking Member Boss, Chairman Takano, Chairman Pappas, and I worked together to introduce my amendment as a standalone bill, H.R. 2911, the VA Transparency and Trust Act. H.R. 2911 passed the full House by a vote of 411 to 4. I thank Ranking Member Bross for leading it, and I thank Chairman Takano and Chairman Pappas for their work with us on that bill. Despite having near unanimous bipartisan support in the House, H.R. 2911 was not moved in the Senate. I hope to fix that here today. The text of my amendment is nearly identical to H.R. 2911, only now it also includes the new funds granted in this reconciliation. As I said in February, we cannot ensure that every taxpayer dollar sent to the VA is truly improving the delivery of health care and benefits for veterans if we do not know why VA needed that dollar in the first place and how it was ultimately spent. Understandably, this necessary and granular oversight does come at a cost. That is why my amendment would fence $2 million from the base amendment to pay for these requirements and reports. This is about one one hundredth of a percent of the entire cost of the base amendment. That's $1 out of every $10,000 spent. As of last week, VA still has nearly $1 billion of CARES and over $16.5 billion of American Rescue Plan funds left unused, but Congress is no closer to knowing how our constituents' hard-earned money is being spent. Every single member of this committee voted for H.R. 2911 on the House floor. I hope to see that same unanimous commitment to transparency and oversight today, and I urge all my colleagues to support my amendment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank you, Mr. Mann. Uh, uh, does any member wish to speak to uh, Mr. Mann's amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would. 
Mr. Pappas, you'll recognize for five minutes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank Ranking Member Mann for uh, submitting this amendment. And uh, this amendment would uh, require biweekly reports on the financial obligations and expenditures of funds under the Build Back Better Act. Obviously, the goal of the amendment is laudable. And I want to commend Ranking Member uh, Mann for his work uh, on our subcommittee um, to ensure strong accountability at VA. Nothing is more important than that. That's one of the reasons why I support the amendment in the nature of a substitute, which includes $15 million for VA Office of Inspector General. Um, so we've worked together, as he has indicated, on legislation, H.R. 2911, that has passed the House overwhelmingly, is in the Senate, which gets at the COVID relief legislation that Congress has passed over the last year and a half, uh, making sure we have greater overs oversight over those pieces of legislation. Um, a simple change could be made to that bill in the Senate to accommodate uh, for additional oversight over the Build Back Better plan. Um, but I, I think that um, regardless of how this amendment turns out, I, I want the ranking member to know that he has my full commitment uh, to work with him, to hold VA accountable, um, and to work to get all the information that members of our subcommittee and the full committee need uh, to ensure that we're being good stewards of these dollars for our constituents. I'm really always ready to work with uh, members of the committee on requests like this. And I just think this amendment is simply not needed since we already have legislation that has moved, has the support of the House, um, and could be amended potentially to accommodate this particular request as it pertains to the Build Back Better plan. So I, I share the goal, uh, but I urge opposition to the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pappas. Does any member wish to speak to Mr. Mann's um, amendment? Uh, if not, uh, the question before us is on Mr. Mann's amendment. Uh, all those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, there's no habit. The amendment is not agreed to. Not Mr. Chairman, I asked for a recorded vote. Uh, is there a second? I second. Uh, there is a sufficient second. Uh, pursuant to committee rule four, further proceedings on the amendment will be postponed. I now call upon Mr. Banks. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of the substitute the offered by the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Representative Banks is recognized for five minutes to speak in support of this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My, my amendment would require the VA to buy American made construction materials for all projects that are funded by this bill. It would also close loopholes in existing buy American laws to ban products made in China and other enemy nations. Finally, it appropriates 1% of the bill's total cost to buy American. I offered a similar amendment in the American Rescue Plan markup, and it was deeply disappointing to see it defeated. This version is closely patterned on language in the bipartisan infrastructure bill that every single Democrat senator voted for. If we are serious about American jobs and our industrial base, we have to close these loopholes. Our existing domestic sourcing laws are riddled with toothless standards and lax enforcement. China explores all of them, exploits all of them and laughs at us. Year after year, the trade deficit grows and shoddy materials show up in our supply chain and in our buildings. It is outrageous that toxic drywall imported from China sickened 100,000 American families. And it's inexcusable that Chinese steel companies continue to dump cheap, faulty steel in this country. The condominium collapse in Surfside, Florida was a tragedy. This happens practically every single month in China. Apartments, hotels, factories, even hospitals fall down because of defective materials and poor quality construction. This should never happen anywhere in America, but least of all in the hospitals where our, where our veterans receive health care. The COVID pandemic has painfully demonstrated the importance of buying American. It extends beyond the defense industry into the consumer economy and the construction industry. We have to take this seriously, even if it means paying a little more for quality American-made materials. It's that simple. I urge all of, all of my colleagues to support this amendment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 
Thank you, Mr. Banks. Uh, does any member wish to speak to Mr. Banks's amendment? Yes, I would, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Pappas, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment offered by Mr. Banks would establish new prohibitions on VA for the procurement of construction material that's manufactured outside the U.S. and projects that are funded by the Build Back Better Act. I urge my colleagues to oppose this particular amendment, uh, but find other ways to support strong Buy American protections uh, with respect to um, our federal dollars. Now, there have long been Buy American requirements for federal procurement that are already in statute. This amendment would establish new rules that only apply to VA's construction. The department would have to determine on its own a host of details regarding exception categories when adequate materials are not available domestically. And these standards for procurement would be different than other agencies currently have. If the current Buy American laws need to be changed, then standards should apply to all federal agencies and our VA hospitals shouldn't become just a test case for this particular uh, kind of government construction. So at the very least, these are issues and questions that certainly deserve a full review through our hearings and through work across Congress. Um, but I urge my colleagues to vote against this particular amendment here. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Is there further debate on the amendment? If not, the amendment by uh, Mr. Banks uh, is before us. Um, all those in favor of the Banks Amendment will say aye. 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 All those opposed will aye. say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Second. I hear a sufficient second. Uh, therefore, uh, under committee rule four, further proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. Uh, Mr. Banks, I recognize you again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered by Mr. Banks of uh, Indiana. Uh, the amendment will be considered as read uh, and Mr. Banks will be recognized for five minutes to speak to his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my amendment uh, would require the VA to demonstrate that its construction management has improved. The Denver Hospital construction project is an inexcusable financial catastrophe. The price tag is two and a half billion dollars, and according to the Denver Post, it is still climbing. This can never be allowed to happen again. At our hearing in May, the VA witnesses assured us the lessons have been learned and everything is better now. Before we appropriate billions more and authorize new hospital projects, we need to know whether or not that's really true. We need to know whether the Army Corps of Engineers involvement is making a difference. We need to know if the designs are truly standardized. We need to know whether cost and schedules are finally adhering to estimates. VA has to demonstrate this, is, this in the data. Taking someone's word for it is just not good enough. Based on my five years on this committee, I have no confidence that $15 billion poured into a VA construction budget will translate into $15 billion worth of usable hospitals in less than a decade. There is just no evidence to support it. What I have seen is Denver, Louisville, and other construction projects stall or stumble over the finish line while their costs uh, rocket upward. Veterans are promised new clinics, but they routinely wait five years or more for the VA to lease a building. It would be irresponsible to sign over $15 billion, close our eyes, and hope for the best. That is not what our constituents sent us here to do. Even if the majority votes to appropriate major construction funding today, this committee will still have to vote to authorize the individual projects at a later date. We should do that with accurate information in hand about whether the VA is truly competent to manage the construction projects. I urge all of my uh, uh, colleagues on this committee to support my amendment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Uh, is there any member who wishes to speak on the Banks Amendment? Yes, I would, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Pappas, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As Mr. Banks just said, this particular amendment would require uh, VA to report to Congress within 90 days on operational status and policy reforms regarding VA construction procurement. I agree with the goals of transparency and accountability. Of course, these are key goals for our oversight and investigation subcommittee. But I have concerns that the information and report required by 
uh, the language of this amendment don't effectively cover the oversight needs of our full committee. I'd like to work with the sponsor and certainly with members of our subcommittee to address these concerns as well as receive the needed technical assistance from the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Army Corps of Engineers uh, that we would need moving forward. So I'm always ready to work with colleagues on a, a request like this. I hope we can do that moving forward, uh, but I urge my colleagues to vote against this particular amendment. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Uh, are there any other members who wish to address uh, the second bank's amendment? If not, uh, the question before the committee is on the bank's the second bank's amendment. All those in favor of the second bank's amendment will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Second. There is, a, I heard a sufficient second without objection. Uh, well, actually, well, uh, the uh, under rule four, uh, further proceedings on the second bank's amendment shall be post uh, shall be postponed. Uh, I now recognize uh, ranking member Bost. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. It is identified as Bost Amendment One. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute and offered by the amendment will be considered as read and ranking member boss uh, is recognized uh, for five minutes to speak to his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would establish a commission to study eligibility for care in the VA health care system and recommend improvements and questions about eligibility for VA care are central to every uh, conversation we have as a committee about better serving veterans. When we talk about toxic exposure, we talk about eligibility. When we talk about mental health and suicide prevention, we talk about eligibility. When we talk about community care, we talk about eligibility. And yes, when we talk about infrastructure, we talk about eligibility. Yet eligibility for VA care is based on an enrollment priority group system that was created in 1996. There have only been occasional piecemeal changes since then. The work looks dip, dip, very different than it did 25 years ago. So does the VA healthcare system, the delivery of care and the veterans community. How can we expect to provide the world-class care that veterans deserve from VA if we are basing policy and funding decisions on an outdated concept of who is eligible and when. We can't. That is why my amendment would establish a commission to study eligibility for VA care and recommend how to bring into the 21st century the commission would and, and then the commission would be made up of a bipartisan group of veterans, experts, and healthcare management and delivery. My amendment is based on the recommendations from the Commission on Care in 2015, which was also fully bipartisan. I'm confident that it would help us make a make certain that the VA is able and equipped to serve today's veterans, not yesterday's. Today's veterans include veterans of Afghanistan who need our help now more than ever. Today's veterans also include the brave men and women in uniform now who are be just beginning to think about their transition to civilian life and the opportunities that they may have there. For their sake, I hope the amendment has the support of every member on this committee. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member Bost. Uh, is there a member who wishes to speak on uh, Bost Amendment Number One? Ms. Brownlee, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, respectfully, I must urge opposition to Ranking Member Boss amendment. The committee has considered this legislation to create a commission to examine which veterans should be eligible for VA health care on at least three occasions in the last year. The ranking member inherited this legislation from his predecessor, Dr. Phil Rowe, 
It was considered twice at the end of last Congress, first at a September 2020 legislative hearing, and then the committee dedicated it dedicated an entire hearing to this bill in December of 2020. Most recently, the committee voted down a similar amendment that was offered by Ranking Member Bost at our July 2021 markup. This legislation is opposed by VA, numerous veteran service organization, and other stakeholders, including Paralyzed Veterans of America, Disabled American Veterans, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and the Veterans Healthcare Policy Institute. We also must question the logic of establishing a commission on eligibility now, given how far along VA is in carrying out the market assessments that were mandated by the Mission Act and the Air Commission process that will begin early next year. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves in a situation where we're tinkering with the size and scope of VA's patient population and its needs after difficult choices about the supply of healthcare resources have already been made. For these reasons, Mr. Chairman, I urge opposition and I yield back. Thank you, Representative Brownlee. Uh, are there any other members who wish to speak on Boston Amendment number one? If, if not, the question uh, before the committee is on uh, ranking uh, on, on boss member number one. Uh, all those in favor uh, of boss member number one will say aye. 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 Um, all those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. Uh, and Mr. Chair, I request a roll call. Uh, is there a second? Uh, under rule four of the committee, uh, the final consideration of boss member one uh, will be uh, postponed. I now recognize ranking member boss again for boss member number two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the, uh, to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk is identified as boss amendment number two. Uh, the, the clerk will call, will uh, report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment and the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered okay. by Mr. Boss. The amendment will be dispensed with. And Representative Boss is recognized for five minutes in support of this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would require VA to explore the benefits of on site medical waste management in VA medical facilities and expand its use within the VA healthcare system. On site medical waste management can improve in infection control and emergency preparedness while reducing cost. On-site medical waste management is also environmentally friendly, which I know is important priority for many of my colleagues. My amendment would help ensure that on-site medical waste management is more widely used in the VA med medical facilities to better serve veterans and taxpayers alike. So I urge all members to support my amendment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Ranking Member Bost. Does any member wish to speak on uh, Bost Amendment Number Two? Chairman Scannell, Congressman uh, Mervan. Representative Mervan, you're recognized for five minutes. I must urge opposition to Ranking Member Bost's amendment. While I appreciate the Ranking Member's interest in this issue, I will note my serious concerns about the amount of funding that has been assigned to it. This opposition is based on the previous CBO score from the 115th Congress in which they indicated they were unable to provide a reliable estimate because of the cost of disposing of regulated medical waste varies based on state and local laws and regulations. In the same report, CBO noted VA spent roughly 10 million to dispose of regulated medical waste in 2017 alone. I think this is a topic that warrants continued conversation after the markup and would seek to see it added to the next possible legislative hearing agenda for the oversight and investigation subcommittee where a standalone bill on this issue was referred earlier in this Congress. I yield back my time. Thank you, Representative Mervan. Is there any other member who wishes to speak on boss amendment number two? If not, the question is on the amendment 
by Ranking Member Boss on, on his second on Amendment Number Two. Um, all those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 Aye. Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Chair, I request a recorded roll call. Vote uh, second. Uh, there's a second. Uh, there being a sufficient second uh, under Rule Four, uh, per further proceedings on the amendment are postponed. Uh, Ranking Member Voss, you're recognized again. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment to the nature of substitute. Does it designate uh, as Boss Amendment Number Three at the desk? The uh, the uh, clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute Without offered by Mr. Bost. The, uh, the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with, uh, and Ranking Member Boss is recognized to speak in favor of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my amendment would uh, allocate $5 billion for the underlying bill as a down payment on the health care research and training provisions of my bill the Toxic Exposure and American uh, Military or the TEAM Act. It is no secret that helping toxic exposed veterans in the top is a top priority of mine and many people on this committee. I know it also a top priority of the, of, of the chairman's uh, as well. And it's also uh, uh, both sides of the aisle. Uh, we know that the, the same could be said about the Senate Committee and the Veterans Affairs and of the VA and also of veteran service organizations. You would, you would think that a bipartisan, bicameral community support like that, uh, that that would make it, would be much further along than we actually are in finding a solution to providing the care and benefits to the toxic exposed veterans. There are many reasons that why we are not uh, at this time, but we have waited to get this information we need from the VA and also we've been waiting to get that from the VA and we've also been waiting to get that from the Biden administration. And we've waited to get the information we need from CBO. And we've had uh, have uh, competing proposals in both the House and the Senate. We have uh, prohibitively high expected cost, especially, especially uh, for presumptions of service connections. We have concerns about the un underlying science and how to uh, to be put, have good standards of taxpayer dollars as well as making policy decisions. We have concerns about implementation and access. I could go on, but the bottom line is this, that the needle has not meaningfully moved in months on getting toxic exposed veterans the care and benefits they've earned. That is not okay with me and I'm sure it's not okay with many of you. Toxic exposures, exposed veterans need help. And now it is particularly important time to give them that help. As I've already discussed this afternoon, veterans have been devastated by the Biden administration's failure in Afghanistan. I have felt some of that devastation as a veteran myself. We need to act to provide for the implement and implement needs of the, uh, the immediate needs of veterans and families who are under stress because of the Afghan Afghanistan crisis. We also need to show these veterans that their service matters, that their sacrifices were not in vain, and that the government they fought for will have their backs long after the time in uniform is over. Many toxic exposed veterans served in Afghanistan around burn pits and other toxins. If we're going to hand VA an extra 18 billion, let's be sure at least some of that money is spent on them. My amendment would do that by ensuring that toxic exposed veterans, which may include those who served in Afghanistan, are eligible to receive care in the VA health care system for toxic exposure. It would also ensure that VA providers are well trained in identifying and treating toxic exposures. It would also provide for ongoing research and study regarding toxic exposures. As I've said earlier, the amendment contains provisions of my bill, the TEAM Act. The TEAM Act is bipartisan and supported by dozens of veterans and military service organizations. I hope that my amendment will have the benefit of similar support today. Toxic exposed veterans deserve no less. Mr. Chairman, with that, I yield back. 
Uh, thank you, Ranking Member Boss. Is there any member who wishes to speak to Boss Member Number Three? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Ruiz, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, I cannot support Ranking Member Bo's amendment and urge members to join me in voting no. Let's be clear. This is a gotcha amendment, an incredibly irresponsible suggestion that it could address toxic exposures. This amendment would allocate $5 billion to a provision modeled after the TEAMS Act that was scored at $100 billion. It is wrong to give veterans the false hope that you would be actually addressing their toxic exposure health issue while providing 5% or 120th of the funds needed to cover the provision. Additionally, this amendment is an incomplete solution that doesn't even provide any presumptions for veterans waiting decades for care and benefits. While I fully support legislative action to address the needs of our toxic exposed veterans, as you all know from my years of advocacy on this issue, this is not the legislation to draw resources from. I will continue with my commitment to work with the chairman to pass comprehensive legislation that addresses toxic exposure this Congress. The Honoring Our PACT Act is that legislation. The PACT Act, which has already been voted out of this committee and includes many of the provisions of this amendment, is the proper vehicle for passage of this type of legislation. We continue to work with the administration, CBO, and our partners in the Senate to identify the full cost of the legislation and determine ways to pay for it. While there is no score for this amendment, it would likely go well beyond the total $18 billion provided in the underlying bill, let alone the $5 billion allocated in the language. Bottom line, if adopted, this amendment would bring down the entire legislation. That would harm veterans by blocking funding for medical facilities like hospitals and clinics, services for homeless veterans, increased medical staffing, and the scanning of paper records for veterans with disability claims, including for claims for toxic exposures. For these reasons, I will vote no on this amendment and encourage my colleagues to do the same. I yield back my time. Thank you, Dr. Ruiz. Is there any other member who uh, wishes to speak uh, on uh, the amendment? Uh, if not, uh, the question is on the amendment by Representative Boss, Boss Amendment Number Three. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 And you oppose? Say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Chairman, I do request a roll call vote. Second. Uh, a sufficient second has been heard uh, pursuant to committee rule four. further proceedings on the amendment shall postpone, shall be postponed. I, I now recognize General Bergman. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, the clerk will uh, report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Bergman. The amendment will be dispensed with. Uh, Representative General Bergman is recognized for five minutes to speak in support of this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would limit major construction uh, funding in the underlying bill to projects that are recommended by the Asset and Infrastructure Review or AIR Commission. This amendment is common sense and would benefit both veterans and taxpayers. I was proud to support the AIR Act three years ago when it was signed into law as part of the Mission Act. AIR was carefully crafted through regular order and had widespread support from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, as well as the veteran service organizations who played a key role in drafting it. VA's infrastructure problems are vast. There is no easy overnight solution to solving them. VA medical facilities are not only outdated, falling behind private sector medical facilities by many decades, 
but they are also misaligned with the veterans they need and supposed to be uh, serving. The, there are many places that need more or different facilities. There may be some places that need fewer facilities. That is why money alone is not the answer. The AIR Act was based on a recommendation from the Bipartisan Commission on Care. It established a transparent, objective, data-driven process to collect input from subject matter experts, statisticians, veterans groups, local communities, VA employees, and veterans themselves. That input will be used to recommend how VA medical facilities could be updated, realigned, and brought into the 21st century so that veterans are better cared for. We are three years into the AIR Act process, and it is at a critical juncture. We are awaiting AIR Commission nominations from the White House, and the VA is preparing recommendations for the Commission to consider. It would be foolish in a foolish waste of time and money to make major investments in VA medical facilities outside of air. Why would we spend millions of dollars on a facility that VA and the Air Commission could recommend for closure or change in short order? In military terms, this is a ready, fire, aim sequence. That is now not how we care for the men and women who have served. And that is not how we show that we are responsible worthy stewards of taxpayers' hard-earned money. I hope my amendment is adopted with bipartisan support. With that, I yield back. Uh, thank you, uh, General Bergman. Is there any member who wishes to speak on the Bergman Amendment? Mr. Chairman? Uh, Representative Levin, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate much of uh, what General Bergman just said, but must urge opposition to Bergen Amendment number one, which would, as he said, only allow VA to fund major construction projects that are in keeping with the recommendations of the Asset and Infrastructure Review Commission or AIR Commission that was created under the VA Mission Act of 2018. The AIR Commission has yet to be named and the commission's recommendations will not be transmitted to the president until January of 2023. Given the historic severity of underfunding as it relates to VA's capital assets, we cannot afford to wait until the Air Commission provides recommendations to Congress and the White House. Major construction to address already identified long-standing needs in areas such as veterans' mental health, long-term care, and spinal cord injury should not be delayed any further. If we're going to build back veterans' trust in VA, we have to start by making serious investments in the outdated infrastructure meant to serve them, and we have to start now. For these regions, Reasons, I urge opposition, and Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Representative Levin. Are there any other members who wish to speak to the Bergman Amendment? And uh, if not, the question uh, before the committee is the Bergman Amendment, Bergman Amendment number one. All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Mr. Chairman, I request a recorded vote. Second. Uh, there is a sufficient second and pursuant to committee rule four, further proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. Um, I now recognize uh, General Bergman again. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. Uh, the uh, clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of the substitute. The meeting of the amendment will be dispensed with, and Representative Bergman is recognized for five minutes in support of the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would fence $100 million in the underlying bill to meet the acute mental health needs of the veterans and families who are in crisis due to the Biden administration's complete failure in Afghanistan. Specifically, it would allocate $50 million to support the Veterans Crisis Line, which has experienced a significant surge in calls, texts, and chats from veterans in need over the last month. In fact, I personally attended a couple of VA, uh, excuse me, VFW meetings here at the request of veterans. It would also allocate $50 million to support and expedite 
the implementation of a community-based suicide prevention grant program that I was proud to sponsor last Congress and get included in the Commander John Scott Hannon Veterans Mental Health Care Improvement Act, which was signed into law almost a year ago. As ranking member Bust said in his opening statement, it is shameful that we are here today in the VA committee discussing yet another unnecessary liberal spending package when there is an active crisis in the veterans community that requires our attention. The terrorist attack on American soil on 9-11-2001 changed our nation and our world forever. No one knows that better than my fellow veterans and their families. For two decades following that tragic day, brave American men and women have served in Afghanistan. They protected our homeland and the right of the Afghan people to live free from tyranny, fear, and oppression. Some of them never made it home. That is why it has been so painful for veterans and families to watch the events of the last month unfold. It has caused them to relive difficult memories. It has caused them to question, in some cases, the merits of their service. It has caused them to mourn all over again for lost friends and family members. It has caused them to fear for the fates of the Americans and the Afghan allies who were left behind. We are already seeing signs of this toll uh, that this has taken on the veteran community. We should have no higher priority in this committee than ensuring our veterans and families are cared for in the midst of this tragedy. Republicans have been calling for an oversight hearing on how the failure in Afghanistan is, impact, is um, impacting our veterans and their families. I pray that you will heed our call soon, Mr. Chairman. We need to hear from Secretary McDonough, Afghan veterans and veterans groups. We need to make sure, without a doubt, that every resource is available to support veterans and families in need. In the meantime, the very least we can do is to adopt my amendment today to provide additional support to the Veterans Crisis Line, the first line of defense for veterans who are struggling, and to ensure community support is available to those at risk of suicide as soon as possible. And with that, I yield back. Uh, thank you, General Bergman, for your comments. And again, I will repeat what I said in response to the opening comments of the ranking member uh, that a hearing on uh, suicide prevention and mental health and the attendant issues to the withdrawal from Afghanistan has already been scheduled and would have been scheduled sooner were it not for scheduling conflicts with a minority. Uh, so uh, we have long uh, been also interested in the very topic that you have raised. Uh, that being said, I must urge opposition to uh, the Bergman Amendment. Uh, in, in developing the amendment in the nature of a substitute, we have been in close touch with the leadership of VA's Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention, including the director of the Veterans Crisis Line. VA already has sufficient funding within this ANS to pay for additional volume and surge capacity for the Veterans Crisis Line. VA has also uh, has also has um, also has the funding already lined up to provide the community suicide prevention grants mandated in the Hannon Act. Expediting those grants is not a question of funding. It's a, it's a question of finishing up the internal VA procedures already underway to set up and run the grant program appropriately. VA has kept all of our bipartisan staff briefed on the timeline and the grants are scheduled for FY22. Uh, for, FY for these reasons, I urge uh, colleagues to um, oppose uh, the amendment. Are there any other uh, members who wish to speak on uh, the Bergman Amendment, Bergman Amendment number two? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would uh, like to uh, respond. Oh, please, Mr. Bergman, please go ahead. You know, um, I know that all of us are trying to do the right thing here for the right reasons. And we are trying to do things in a bureaucratic process. I can tell you firsthand from face-to-face -face interactions over the last couple of weeks, we have another budding crisis with veterans and mental health and potential for suicide on our hands. And in the end, and in the end, if we as the House Veterans Affairs Committee 
community committee don't get this right to energize the VA now to make this a priority, we're going to have negative results that we could have countered. Just like if we, as the Biden administration, largely through the Secretary of State, had done more planning and gotten off their bureaucratic backsides to get visas processed, to get all the all the things necessary for an evacuation in process beforehand rather than just laying it out saying well we'll get to it because it's number three on our priority list that doesn't cut it on the battlefield and i can tell you that we need to act now with that i yield back well, well thank you general bergman um i think there are a number of questions uh coming from both sides of the aisle this committee is the jurisdiction um you know, does not have within it the capacity to uh, review the shortcomings of what was and what could have been done better. Um, as you mentioned, the State Department was is within the jurisdiction of the Foreign Affairs Committee. We have a, uh, a solemn uh, duty uh, to deal with uh, responding to veterans' needs, and that includes their mental health, that includes suicide prevention, um, uh, 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 offerings uh, from the Veterans uh, Affairs Department, uh, from the Veterans uh, uh, Department. And uh, as, as I said, we uh, were in the process of scheduling a hearing much sooner, uh, but for conflicts uh, with uh, the minority schedule, and we still have not received um, adv advice on uh, who the minority uh, uh, witness will be uh, at the hearing that we have scheduled. So uh, with that being said, uh, as I said, we already do have sufficient we're actually for all of the things that you uh, have called for. Uh, and so if there are no other, uh, if there's any other uh, members who wish to speak to the Bergman Amendment, uh, and if not, we will, the question is on the Bergman Amendment. All those a favor of in favor of the of Bergman Amendment Number Two, please uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Mr. Uh, chair, the amendment is not agreed. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we ask for a roll call. Uh, sufficient second um, has been uh, heard, and uh, pursuant to Committee Rule Four. Further proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. I now call upon Dr. Murphy. Uh, I will correct myself. I do stand correct. We just have received uh, word that the minority witness has been for our, our uh, mental health and suicide prevention hearing has been forwarded to us. We appreciate the, the minority giving us that. Um, uh, and now, Dr. Murphy, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Murphy of North that Carolina. Be, uh, the amendment uh, will be, uh, the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Murphy will be is recognized for five minutes to speak to his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would fence $100 million in the underlying bill to support the VA readjustment counseling service centers, more commonly known as the vet centers. There are approximately 300 vet centers across the United States. They provide much needed counseling, uh, community and peer support services to veterans and their families, including Gold Star families who are struggling to adjust to life after military service, or sadly enough, grieving the loss of a loved one. As a physician, I know that that kind of care can literally be life-saving, and it has arguably never been more important as we're hearing from several members right now. Veterans and families are suffering because of the Biden administration's catastrophic failure in Afghanistan. And while I understand it is not the purview of this committee to examine that failure, it is the purview of this committee to understand how that failure has affected our veterans. 
They are wondering, many of our Afghan veterans are, are wondering if their sacrifice meant in anything. Case in point, demand at the, veter at the Veterans Crisis Line services has risen significantly over the last month. And while the media and the Biden administration seems to have forgotten this disaster, our veterans cannot or have not been able to, and we cannot. It's a troubling signal of the serious detriment that the impact that this crisis is causing on our veteran community. Sadly, I fear there is much more to come. It seems that every day we get more and more details about what actually occurred in Afghanistan and how this administration left Americans and their allies behind. It brings back painful memories to our veterans and raises questions all over again, especially those who served in Afghanistan and the Gold, Far, Gold Star families who lost family members about why they were there and why their loved ones perished. It's shocking that we're not holding a committee meeting in the VA Affairs Committee to talk about those veterans and their families. Nothing is more important. I wrote to you, Mr. Chairman, along with several of my colleagues several years ago asking for a hearing, and I've not gotten a response. I'm sure veterans of Afghanistan would like one as well. In the meantime, we know that veterans are in need and vet centers are on the front lines meeting that need. My men would provide additional resources so that vet centers are equipped to meet the increasing demands for care. It would also provide additional resources to expand the number of vet centers so that more veterans, families, and communities can benefit from them on not only now, but in the future. I hope that every one of my colleagues would join me in supporting this amendment. It's for, the caring, it's for caring for the mentally anguished and those who have sacrificed so much for our freedom. It is the least that we can do in a bipartisan manner to show the veterans that we have their back at a time when too many are questioning that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. Uh, thank you, Dr. Murphy. Is there any member who wishes to uh, speak on the Murphy Amendment? Uh, Chairman Connell, this is uh, Congressman Mervan. Uh, Mr. Mervan, you're recognized for five minutes. Of the amounts appropriated to the Department of Veterans Affairs under this title, 100 million shall be available for improving and expanding the capacity of existing vet centers. As such, the term is defined in the section 171. 2A of Title Three of Title 38, United States Code, and supporting this establishment of the new vet centers. With that amendment, I must urge opposition to the Murphy Amendment Committee majority members and the staff have talked at length with the VA's Readjustment Counseling Center leadership and there is already sufficient funding within the ANS to pay for the expanding and the number of vet centers and staffing them to meet the increased demand. For this reason, I urge opposition. With that, I yield back. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mervan. Is there any other member who wishes to speak on Dr. Murphy's amendment to the ANS? Uh, if not, the question is on the amendment by Representative Murphy, Dr. Murphy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 The opinion of the chairs, the no is Mr. Happened. Chairman. Uh, yes. I would like a roll call vote, please. Second. Uh, there is a sufficient second pursuant to committee rule four. Proceedings on the amendment uh, shall be postponed. Uh, Mr. Elzey, you are recognized. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Elzey of Texas. Reading of the amendment will be dispensed with, uh, and Mr. Elzey will be recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Chairman and members, the amendment I respectfully bring for your consideration would fence $100 million of the funds made available in the underlying bill to support our veterans through mobile infrastructure. Mobile infrastructure provides mobile community-based outpatient clinics, mobile intensive care units, and mobile vet centers. The vet centers are otherwise known by the Department of Veterans Affairs as readjustment counseling centers. This mobile infrastructure increases access to care for veterans, particularly in struggling and underserved areas, and does so much more rapidly than building a new facility or renovating an outdated one. 
The VA has made incredible use of mobile infrastructure by surging mobile vet centers to communities in need of more mental health support as a place to go for free confidential support and someone to talk to if they're struggling, especially after August 31st, which has seen an incredible increase in veterans calling and crying out for help. The VA makes effective use of mobile infrastructures in, in emergencies or natural disasters. For instance, if a hurricane or wildfire hits a given area and damages a VA clinic, VA will send in a mobile clinic so veterans can still receive care while recovery and repairs are ongoing. Mobile infrastructure, ICUs in particular, have also been a key part of the VA's pandemic response due to the ease and flexibility of deployment by the VA to increase surge capacity at facilities with high caseloads. Congress acted in a bipartisan manner in 2018 with the AIR Act. With the VA medical facilities have major deficits and the AIR Act, AIR Act process underway, this amendment reflects the wisest manner to spend taxpayer dollars outside of the AIR Act process. That process is data-driven, transparent, and was signed into law three years ago with bipartisan support and with input and support from veterans groups. In other words, it's the exact opposite of the bill we're debating this afternoon. The cost-effective expenditures on mobile care facilities reflected in this amendment will increase access to care for veterans. This amendment is a win-win for veterans, taxpayers, and everyone concerned with the quality of care that veterans receive in exchange for their brave service. Our constituents trust us to put their hard-earned money to good use. My fellow veterans expect the same. And as an aside, after 20 years of war, the tsunami is already here. With the disgraceful conclusion of combat operations in Afghanistan, another one is on its way and we need to be ready for it. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and I reserve the balance of my time. Thank you, Representative Elzey. Uh, is there any member who wishes to speak on the Elzey Amendment? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Levin, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I welcome Mr. Elzey to the committee and look forward to working with him. Uh, but I must urge opposition to the Elzey Amendment. What we're trying to do with this measure is to make extraordinary long overdue investments in infrastructure that VA needs to deliver care now and in the future. A significant portion of VA medical facilities are over 50 years old, making it difficult not only to deliver state-of-the-art health care to veterans, but also to keep up with the growing demand for care and services. While I certainly understand the value of mobile assets, such as mobile intensive care units, community-based outpatient clinics, and vet centers, we need to seize this opportunity to make more significant resource investments in brick and mortar VA facilities, which have been neglected for generations. For these reasons, I must urge opposition. However, I believe many of us would be willing to work with our newest colleague, Mr. Elzey, in the future to, assure, to, to ensure that additional mobile assets are funded through the regular appropriations process. It's important for VA to be able to meet veterans where they are, and we should work closely with the department to determine what level of investment is needed in mobile ICUs, CBOX, and bed centers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Levin. Does any other member wish to speak on the LZ Amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment by Representative LZ. All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, request a record vote. Second. Second. There is a sufficient second, and pursuant to committee rule four, further proceedings on the amendment shall be performed. Um, I will now recognize Ms. Radawagon. Ms. Radawagon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mrs. Uh, Radawagon. Uh, read, the further reading of the amendment will be dispensed with, and Ms. Radawagon is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Thank you, Chairman Takano. My amendment would require VA to conduct a communications and outreach campaign to veterans who served in Afghanistan to ensure they're aware of the care and benefits that are available to them at VA. It would also allocate $5 million from the underlying bill for this purpose. My colleagues have already described this afternoon the pain, stress, and heartache that the crisis in Afghanistan has imposed on veterans and their families. The brave men and women who served in Afghanistan need our help and our support 
They need to know that their service and sacrifices mattered and that they've not been forgotten or left behind. My amendment would help deliver that message and make certain that those veterans are aware of the many wonderful services that may be available to them through the Department of Veterans Affairs and how to take advantage of them. It would require VA to conduct individual outreach to veterans of Afghanistan and also a general that outreach that prohibited calling in through public service announcements, educational materials, and information about best practices for connecting with VA. I hope that my amendment will have the support of every member of this committee, Republican and Democrat alike, and send a strong bipartisan message of support and encouragement to the Afghanistan veterans that I know are all at the front of our minds during this difficult time. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Radawagon. Does any member wish to speak to the Radawagon Amendment? Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, so I will speak on the amendment. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot support the amendment that is offered by Ms. Radawagon. Many uh, majority members and staff have been in constant contact with VA and particularly its Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention. Um, we've been in touch since the time of the Afghanistan withdrawal to ensure that VA is doing all that it can to reach out to and support veterans. We do not have any indication from VA that it needs more than its current funding to continue reaching out and offering services to veterans dealing with the current events and their own service in Afghanistan. As you know, we will have a full committee hearing next week, which has been in the work for weeks to hear more specifics from VA and VSOs about veteran mental health promotion and suicide prevention efforts. I encourage members to press VA for more details on this issue at that meeting next week. For these reasons, I urge opposition to the Rattle Wagon Amendment. Um, is there any other member who wishes to um, address the Rattle Wagon Amendment? Um, and if not, uh, the question is on the amendment by Representative Rattle Wagon. All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, without objection, I request a roll call. Uh, second, Mr. Chairman, I, I ask for a recorded vote. There being a sufficient second uh, under Rule Four of the committee, uh, further proceedings on the amendment are postponed. Um, I now recognize uh, Ms. Mace. Ms. Mace, uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Ms. Mace of South Carolina. No objection, further reading of the amendment will be dispensed with and Representative Mace is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Thank you, Chairman Takano and uh, welcome Representative Elsey to the VA committee or HVAC. Um, my amendment would extend the applicability of a portion of the underlying bill that authorizes interim leasing and another section that appropriates lease funding by an additional year until 2025 as it currently stands it would end in 2024 one of the major medical facility leases that was proposed by the va in the most recent budget submission is actually in beaufort south carolina in south carolina's first congressional district in my district my understanding is that congressional authorizations for va major medical facility leases used to be a Comparatively simple uh, process, but due to a change in how the CBO scored VA medical major medical facility leases in 2012, Congress has been at basically a standstill on VA lease authorizations for the last decade. The underlying bill would address this by providing the VA with additional leasing authorities and bringing the VA leasing more in line with the General Services Administration, who manages leases for the rest of the federal government. 
I wish that members would have the, had the opportunity to thoroughly discuss this proposal and committee before, of course, I brought it up um, and asked for a vote on it today. The fact that we didn't have the opportunity, I think is a shame brought about by what's so far been this year, a very partisan reconciliation process in just about every committee I've sat in on um, that uh, the majority in DC is using to rush $3.5 trillion in this massive spending bill in Congress. That said, Congress's inability to act quickly to authorize VA major medical facility leases. This isn't putting our veterans first. And each of us here want to do what's best for all of our veterans across the country. We've got to find a way to move forward in providing veterans with the least facilities uh, that they need in, I believe, a much more efficient and much more timely manner. And I'm hopeful that that uh, this could have been addressed um, today. For that reason, I'm supportive of the lease authorities and the underlying bill. I hope that they will provide veterans in South Carolina across the country and communities large and small with increased access to high quality care for years to come. I'm sure it was just an oversight on part of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to allow some of those additional leasing authorities to expire in 2024 at the end of Biden's term, but we really should extend that uh, an additional year. That would give the VA more time to put these authorities, these leasing authorities to good use. It would also give lawmakers more time to weigh how well these authorities are working and decide whether they should be permanent. I hope all of my colleagues on the committee would support this amendment and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Mace. Uh, is there any member who wishes to speak on uh, the Mace amendment? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be recognized uh, Ms. Brownlee, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I must very reluctantly oppose uh, the Mace Amendment, uh, given the challenges I faced in my own district to secure a lease some years ago. I have become vigilant, as you know, um, about finding a permanent fix to this issue so others like Ms. Mays don't have to experience the same disappointment from their constituents. While the underlying language is far from perfect, it was carefully crafted to score within the budget window that was laid out in the budget reconciliation uh, directive. I hope my colleagues will recognize that um, and support the language and the underlying ANS rather than this amendment. Uh, and I would welcome uh, Representative Mace's uh, joining me in fighting this issue because I concur with your concerns and we do need a permanent fix to this leasing situation to put our veterans first. With that, I urge my colleagues to vote no on the Mace Amendment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will yield back. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Brownlee. Is there any other member who wishes to speak on the Mace Amendment? Before I, I call for a vote, I, I do want to thank uh, Representative Brownlee for her, uh, for her passionate leadership on this issue. We are able to find a way to get to a permanent fix. Um, unfortunately, it cannot be done uh, with this uh, reconciliation bill before us. Um, so uh, if there are no other members who wish to speak on the Mace Amendment, uh, the question is on the amendment by Representative Mace. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. 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 In the opinion, no. In the opinion of the chair of the no's have it, the amendment is not agreed to and Mr. Chairman, we request a roll call. And I am here for a, I hear a sufficient second pursuant to committee rule four. Further proceedings on the amendment shall be postponed. Um, I now recognize uh, ranking member Bost. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk that is identified as Bost amendment number four. Uh, the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute Without offered by Mr. A reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Representative Boss is re recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the amendment, the, the chairman's amendment in the nature of a substitute provides $15.2 billion for construction, including major construction. As the member of this committee know, as every member of this committee knows, we have an asset and infrastructure review uh, or the air process underway, which many of us have talked about today. The entire purpose of the air is to provide recommendations for how and where VA medical facility footprint should be updated to better serve the veterans. Why the majority is proposing to spend billions of dollars to construct new medical facilities before that process is complete is beyond me. Therefore, my amendment would reduce the 15.2 billion to 8.9 billion. It would then only, it only allow for 8.9 billion to be used for non-recurring maintenance in the fiscal year 2022 budget request. VA project that pre, VA projects that the backlog for non-recurring maintenance would cost roughly 8.9 billion. This amendment would fund all of the VA's most immediate maintenance needs, ensuring our veterans have safe, well-maintained medical centers and clinics is vital. And non-recurring maintenance addresses these requirements quickly and where the VA and the veterans need it the most. But building new hospitals will take years and cost billions of dollars. Just look at, at, at what we know from what happened at the Denver VA Medical Center, especially those of us who have been around this committee for a while. Because doing that before we know where the VA should place its assets is foolish. For these reasons, I urge my colleagues to support the amendment. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, Record Member Boss. Um, I uh, recognize myself in opposition. Uh, I must urge opposition to Ranking Member Boss' amendment, which would replace Section 12001 of the ANS. Uh, and with an appropriation of $8.9 billion that VA could only spend on non-recurring maintenance projects. This amendment would significantly limit VA's ability to enhance and revitalize, revitalize its capital asset portfolio by limiting the department to a single type of project. This would keep VA from being able to direct funds to more than 900 major and minor construction projects in its long range capital plan, projects that have been waiting for years for funding. This includes 261 major and minor construction project facilities in or near districts of Republican committee members, 36 of which are on VA's strategic capital investment planning list. These are the infrastructure projects that VA has deemed to be most critical to address in the near term. This amendment would deny the ranking member's own constituents and those of his colleagues on the Republican side of the dais the opportunity to have any of these major and minor construction projects funded. Make no mistake about it, Republican members will be voting against their own constituents. And let me just add before I close that uh, the vaunted Air Commission uh, is been delayed not because of a failure of the White House to put forward uh, nominees. It's been the Republican leadership uh, of the House and Senate who have failed uh, to put forward their recommendations for those nominations. Um, and so uh, I, once again, urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. Uh, and with that, I will look to see if anyone else on the committee is uh, wishing to speak on Boston Amendment Number Four. Uh, seeing none, uh, uh, the question is now on the amendment by Representative Boss. Boss Amendment Number Four. All those in favor of the amendment will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. And the amendment is not. Second. Uh, I hear a sufficient second uh, and under rule four of the committee, further uh, uh, consideration uh, further proceedings will be postponed on amendment number four.
Um, we will now move toward uh, uh, votes, uh, the postponed votes on all the amendments put forward. Um, I do not hear, I do not see other amendments uh, that have been um, timely submitted. So we will move to the unfinished business of recorded votes on amendments. I do ask that members do uh, turn on their cameras, be prepared to vote um, so we can move uh, quickly. Yeah, I'm gonna give a couple of minutes for members to return and turn on their cameras. So I do have to see you on screen in order to begin the vote. All right, the clerk will, question. the question is on the Cawthorn amendment to the uh, amendment in the nature of a substitute. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee, no. no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas? No. Ms. Loria? No. Lori. Mr. Mervan? No. Mr. Sablon? No. Mr. Ms. Underwood? Ms. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred? No. Ms. Frankel? No. Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? No. Mr. Trone. Mr. Trone. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. Ruiz Dr. votes no. Mr. Gallego. Gallego Mr. votes Gallego. no. Oh, I found it now. Mr. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss. Ms. Radawagon. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Battle lag and I. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman. Bergman. Votes aye. Mr. Banks. Aye. Mr. Banks. Aye. Mr. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy's an I. Mr. Mann. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Ms. Mace. Aye. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Mr. Rosendale. Dr. Miller Meeks. Aye. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Trone. Trone is a no. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Ms. Slotkin. Ms. Slotkin. And Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takata votes no. Clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I'm I'm here. I, I thought my camera was on. I apologize. How does uh, 
the clerk, uh, I'm asked the clerk, how is Ms. Locken recorded? Ms. Locken is not voted as having, uh, is not recorded as having voted. Ms. Uh, Ms. Locken, how do you vote? I vote aye. Okay. All right, the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Uh, 11 ayes and 16 noes. Uh, the, therefore, the motion is not agreed to. Uh, and the motion to reconsider is, uh, uh, is not agreed to without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Uh, the uh, question now before us is on the amendment offered by Dr. Miller Meeks, her amendment to the ANS. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. Um, votes no. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. Mr. Trone. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. Ruiz votes no. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Boss. Boss votes aye. Ms. Rattlewagon. Rattlewagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman. Bergman votes aye. Bergman Mr. votes Banks. aye. Mr. Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. <clears throat> Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy votes yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace Ms. votes Mace. yes. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, Mr. aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elzey. Elzey, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Trone. Trone's a no. Mr. Roy, Mr. Cawthorn, Mr. Nels, and Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes. Chairman Takano votes no. And the clerk will report. I'm Mr. sorry, how's Mr. Lamb recorded? Madam Clerk, how is Mr. Lamb recorded? Mr. Lamb is recorded as not having voted. Mr. Lamb, how do you vote? Uh, Lamb votes no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Clerk, please record Mr. Lamb as a no vote. Clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 17 noes. 
there being 11 ayes and 17 noes, the amendment is not agreed to. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Members, we are going to pause for just a moment uh, to make sure uh, that the first roll call vote was properly recorded. Upon confirmation and review of the first vote, uh, we have a revised total of 12 ayes and 15 noes. The amendment is still not agreed to. We will now move on to um, the third roll call vote and the, that uh, question, well, actually it's on the, uh, it's Dr. the third, it's Dr. Dr. Moore. Dr. Moore, the question is on Dr. Moore's amendment to the nature of, and the, uh, to amendment to the uh, amendment to nature of substitute, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Lamb Mr. votes Lamb. no. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. Mr. No. Pappas. No. Ms. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. I'm going to both of them in there. Ms. Un Ms. Underwood. <laughs> Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Botkin. No. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. Ruiz votes no. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Box. Gallego votes no. Mr. Box. Ross Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman Mr. votes aye. Mr. Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy's an aye. Mr. Mann. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mace votes aye. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Not the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 17 noes. There are 11 ayes and 17 noes. 
Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Question, uh, we now will move to uh, uh, the Rosendale amendment on the amendment to, uh, to the amendment to nature of substitute. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. Mervan votes no. Mr. Sablon. Sablon votes no. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. Sure no. That, like, Mr. Brown. I'm going to override a Hogan veto. No. Brown, no. I think we need to work on if we're going to do 8 0. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. Ruiz Dr. votes Ruiz. no. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Bost. Bost, Bost votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman votes aye. Uh, aye. Mr. Um, Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Uh, yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore is a yes. Ms. Mace. Mace is a yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Yes. Dr. Miller Meeks. I'll follow Mr. Rosendale's yes with a yes. Mr. Elzi. Elzi, aye. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Chicago votes, uh, votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? The clerk will report the, uh, the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. 11, uh, on the uh, Rosendale Amendment, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Uh, therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We'll now move on to the uh, man amendment. Uh, the man amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Only votes no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. Mervan votes no. Mr. Sablon. Um, votes no. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Boss. Aye. Ms. Rattlewagon. Rattlewagon, aye. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Aye. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy's a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Ma'am, Moore votes yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Mace. Yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, yes. Dr. Miller Meeks. Dr. Miller Meeks. Mr. Elzi. LZI. Mr. Gallego. 
Okay, there's a no. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Dr. Miller Meeks. And Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? And then the clerk will call will uh, will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 10 ayes and 17 noes. There are 10 ayes and 17 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Uh, we now will move to the question of uh, the bank's amendment number one. Um, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Only votes no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. Ms. Loria. No. no. Mr. Mervan. Mr. Mervan. I'll keep you posted. Mervan votes no. Love you. Mr. Sablon. Aye. No. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown, no. Mr. Trone. Mr. Trone. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. Gallego's a no. Mr. Boss. Boss is an aye. Ms. Radwagon. Ms. Radwagon. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Mr. Roy. Mr. Murphy. Or Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a uh, yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mace, aye. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Yes. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Ms. Slotkin. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the chairman votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Mr. Chairman, uh, it's Lauren Underwood. How am I reporting? Uh, how is Ms. Underwood recorded, uh, Madam Clerk? Ms. Underwood is recorded as no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Uh, the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 12 ayes and 16 noes. On this question, there are 12 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. And without objection, the motion, is re to re motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We'll move on uh, to the question um, of the bank's amendment number two. Um, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. Ms. Loria. Mr. No. Mervan. Mervan Mr. votes Mer no. Mervan votes no. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. 
Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Kaptur. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Aye. Ms. Radawag. Ms. Ms. Radawag. Aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy's a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Ms. Mace. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, yes. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, yes. Mr. Elsie. <coughs> Mr. Elsie. Elsie, yeah, aye. Mr. Roy. Ms. Mace. So nice. Ms. Mr. Cawthorn. Ms. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Takano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Um, this is Representative Luria. How was I recorded on this vote? Madam Clerk, how is Ms. Luria recorded? Ms. Luria is recorded as no. Clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, this is Congresswoman Mace. How am I recorded? Madam Clerk, how is Congresswoman Mace recorded? Ms. Mace is not recorded. Mace, I'd like to vote yes. Representative Mace votes yes. Are there any members who wish to record or change their votes? Clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 17 noes. On this vote, there are 11 ayes and 17 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We will now move on to uh, boast amendment number one to the ANS. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Ms. Mr. Mervan. Mr. Mervan. Mervan votes no. Mr. Sablon. Sablon votes aye. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. No. Ms. Kaptur. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mace votes aye. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Hey, Lucas. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, yes. Mr. LZ. LZ, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels, 
Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Does any member wish to be recorded? Mr. Mr. Sablon, Mr. Sablon, did you intend to be a yes vote on this on this um, roll call? Uh, yes, I did, Mr. Chairman. Uh, clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 12 ayes and 15 noes. Uh, for this vote, there are 12 ayes uh, and 16 noes. Or did you say 15 or 16 uh, noes? There are 15 noes. 15 noes. So 12 ayes and 15 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We will now move on to boss amendment number two. Um, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Ms. Lord. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sublon. Bond votes no. Ms. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. Ms. Captor. No, thank you. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Boss. Gallego votes no. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy Dr. is Murphy. a yes. Murphy is a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. No. Mr. Moore's a yes. Ms. Mace. Mace, yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale is yes. Dr. Miller meets. Yes. Mr. LZ. LZI. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Mr. Brown. Lamb. Uh, Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman DeConnell votes no. Are there any members who wish to change the votes? Any members who wish to be recorded? The clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. For this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We now will move to Boston Amendment number three. Uh, question before the committee is Boston Amendment number three. 
Uh, Kirk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. No. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Box. Mr. Box votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman. Mr. Bergman is yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elsie. Elsie, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takata votes no. Are there members who wish to change um, their votes or his or her votes? Any members who wish to be recorded? If not, the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. There are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Without objection, the motion is laid on the table. And we'll now move on to Bergman Amendment Number One. Uh, the question before the committee is on Bergman, number, Bergman Amendment Number One. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. No. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Ms. Slotkin. No. Mr. Trone. Mr. Trone. Trone votes, Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Ms. Radawagon. Mr. Bergman. Aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elsie. Elsie, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? 
any members who need to be who wish to be recorded. If not, clerk. How is Radawagon recorded, please? Uh, Madam Clerk, how is Ms. Radawagon recorded? Ms. Radawagon is recorded as I. Ms. Radawagon, you are recorded as I. For a report. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. There are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the uh, amendment is not agreed to. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We will now move on to Bost Amendment Number Two. Oh, excuse me. Is it uh, part of Bergman Amendment Number Two? The vote is on Bergman Amendment Number Two. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sublon. No. Ms. Underwood. No. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Boss. Gallego votes no. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. Banks votes yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a yes. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Yes. Mr. LZ. LZI. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Ms. Slotkin. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Clerk will call, clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 12 ayes and 15 noes. Uh, there are 12 ayes and 15 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. And without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. And we'll now move on to uh, Dr. Murphy. So the, uh, we are now, uh, the question before the committee is now on the amendment from Dr. Murphy to the ANS. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. 
No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. No. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown, no. Ms. Plotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. Ms. No. Captor. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Rattlewagon. Rattlewagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, yes. Mr. Elsie. Elsie, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Chicano votes no. Clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 10 ayes and 16 noes. For this vote, there are 10 ayes and 16 noes. Huh? Madam Clerk, I just want to confirm there are 10 ayes and 16 noes. Yes, that is correct. All right, so there are 10 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the motion is uh, not agreed, the, the amendment is not agreed to. And what objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. And we'll now move to uh, the LZ amendment to the ANS. The question before us is the LZ amendment to the ANS. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Right. Mr. Lamb. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sublon. No. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Ms. Lotkin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Mann. Mann votes aye. Mr. Moore. Moore votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mace votes aye. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, yes. Mr. Elsie. Elsie, aye. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. And Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takala votes no.
Clerk, report the vote. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, how is Mr. Lamb recorded? Uh, Madam Clerk, how is Mr. Lamb recorded? Mr. Lamb is not recorded. Mr. Lamb, how do you vote? Mr. Lamb votes no. Madam Clerk, report the vote, please. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 10 ayes and 17 noes. There are 17 ayes and 17 noes um, on the LZ amendment. There are 10 ayes and 17 noes. 10 ayes, 17 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. And I, uh, without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We'll now move on to the Rata Wagon Amendment to the ANS. Um, the question before the committee is the Rata Wagon Amendment. Uh, the clerk will please call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. No, we know. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Ms. Radawagon. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Thanks, folks, yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace, Ms. yes. Mace, yes. Mr. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, yes. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Ms. Slotkin. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Connell votes no. The clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. For this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We will now move on to uh, the Mace Amendment to the ANS. The question before the committee is the Mace Amendment. Clerk will call the roll. Here this moment, we're having a bit of audio issues, so we're on the Mace Amendment. The clerk, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 11 ayes and 16 noes. Um, I, well, I did, I'd already record, I did, did uh, announce that 11 ayes and 16 noes on the, this is on the Rattawagon Amendment, right? Yes. Um, and I 
already did say it, the, the memo was not agreed to and without objection, the motion to, let, to reconsider is laid on the table. And we are now uh, considering the Mace Amendment to the ANS. Um, the question before the committee is the Mace Amendment. The clerk will call the roll on the Mace Amendment. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee, no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. Across the world. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Ms. Lockin. No. Mr. Trone. Trone votes no. Ms. Captor. No, thank you. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Mann. Mann votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace votes yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Uh... Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Chicano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Any members who have not yet been recorded? If not, clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 10 ayes and 17 noes. 10 ayes and 17 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We will now move to uh, the BOST Amendment number four. The question before the committee is BOST Amendment number four. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Lamb. No. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Pappas. No. Ms. Loria. No. Mr. Mervan. No. Mr. Sablon. No. Oh. Ms. Underwood. No. Mr. Allred. Mr. Allred. Ms. Frankel. No. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Ms. Lockin. No. Mr. Trone. No. Ms. Captor. No. Dr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Gallego. No. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is aye. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Dr. Mm -hmm. Murphy. Mr. Mann. Man votes yes. Mr. Moore. Moore votes yes. Ms. Mace. Mace, yes. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Dr. Miller Meeks. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, aye. Mr. Elzy. Elzy, aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. 
Mr. Cawthorn, Mr. Nels, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? The members who have not yet been recorded. Not uh, the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 10 ayes and 17 noes. There are 10 ayes and 17 noes. Therefore, the amendment is not agreed to without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Now, is there further debate or amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? If not, the question is not agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print. All those in favor uh, to the amendment in the nature of substitute to the committee print will say aye. 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 Any opponents will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Chairman, yeah, I, re I request a roll call vote. Uh, there is a request for a roll call vote. Is there a sufficient second? Second. There is a roll call vote is ordered on agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute, and the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee, aye. Mr. Lamb. Yes. Mr. Levin. Yes. Mr. Pappas. Aye. Ms. Loria. Aye. Mr. Mervan. Yes. Mr. Sablon. Aye. Ms. Underwood. Underwood votes aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Ms. Frankel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Brown. Brown votes aye. Ms. Slotkin. Yes. Mr. Trone. Yes. Ms. Captor. Aye. Dr. Ruiz. Aye. Mr. Gallego. Mr. Gallego. Aye. Mr. Box. Mr. Box votes no. Ms. Radwagon. Radwagon nay. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is no. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. No. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. No. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a no. Mr. Mann. Mann votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes no. Ms. Mace. Mace votes no. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Nels. Of the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2022. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, no. Dr. Miller Meeks. Miller Meeks, no. Mr. Elsey. Elsey, no. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels. Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes no. Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Mr. Chairman, this is Mr. Allred. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to vote aye. Mr. Allred, you wish to change your vote to aye. So Mr. Allred, you, Mr. Allred's vote is aye. Is there any member who wishes to be recorded? Mr. Chairman, how are you recorded? Uh, Ms. Underwood, how is Ms. Underwood recorded? No, no, how are you recorded, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, Chairman Takano is, uh, Chairman Takano votes aye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there other member who wishes to change his or her vote? Mr. Chairman, can I have a roll call, please? Um, or not a roll call, how do I vote, Mr. Chairman? Uh, M Madam Clerk, how is uh, Mr. Brown recorded? Mr. Brown is recorded as I. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there any other member who wishes to be recorded or change their vote? Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, can I just make sure that my vote was recorded? This is Congressman Roy. Uh, Mr. Roy, uh, Madam Clerk, how is Mr. Roy recorded? Mr. Roy is recorded as no. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay. The clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 17 ayes and 12 noes. There are 17 ayes and 12 noes. The amendment in the nature of substitute is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. I now move that the committee now transmit the recommendations of this committee and all appropriate accompanying material, including additional supplemental and dissenting views to the House Committee on Budget in order to comply with the reconciliation directive included in section 2002 of the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2021, Senate concurring resolution concurrent resolution 14 and consistent with section 310 of the Congressional Budget and Impoundment Control Act of 1974. Uh, my motion also, uh, I also move uh, to uh, transmit the committee print as amended, um, uh, that to be included in the motion. So all those in favor of the motion uh, will say aye. 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 All those opposed will say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the ayes. Uh, have it and uh, we do ask a recorded vote. Uh, second, there's a sufficient second. A roll call vote is ordered, and the clerk will call the roll. Ms. Brownlee, Brownlee, aye. Mr. Lamb, yes. Mr. Levin, yes. Mr. Pappas, aye. Ms. Loria, aye. Mr. Mervan, yes. Mr. Sablon. I've been up since 10 o'clock last night. Yes, for the final time. <laughs> yes. Ms. Underwood. Yes. Mr. Allred. Yes. Ms. Frankel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Brown votes aye. Ms. Slotkin. Aye. Mr. Trout. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Brown votes aye. I think I was off camera. I apologize. I'm on camera. Brown votes aye. I apologize for the disruption. Ms. Kapter. Aye. Dr. Ruiz. Aye. Mr. Gallego. Aye. Mr. Boss. Boss votes no. Ms. Bradwagon. Bradwagon nay. Mr. Bergman. Bergman is no. Mr. Banks. Banks votes no. Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy. Dr. Murphy. Murphy is a no. Mr. Mann. Mann votes no. Mr. Moore. Moore votes no. Ms. Mace. Mace, no. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Cawthorn, Mr. Nels, Mr. Nels, Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, no. Dr. Miller Meeks. No, ma'am. Mr. Elsey. Elsey, no. Mr. Roy. No. Mr. Cawthorn. Mr. Nels and Mr. Chairman. Chairman Takano votes yes. Are there any members who wish to change their votes? Any members who have not yet been recorded? If not, the clerk will report the vote. 
Mr. Chairman, for this vote, there are 17 ayes and 12 noes. For this vote, there are 17 ayes and 12 noes. Uh, therefore, uh, the motion uh, is agreed to. Uh, the recommendations of the committee shall be transmitted to the budget committee and without objection, the staff is authorized to make necessary technical and conforming changes. Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman it, you may have said this already, but I, um, just in case, pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2, I give notice that in then of, of the file of minority, supplemental, additional, and uh, dissenting views. Uh, the uh, without objection, uh, so ordered. I, I did say so in my motion. Thank you. Uh, uh, dissenting views. Uh, did you get back to other... me? No. Who needs? Uh, is anyone calling to be recognized? What about right. COVID? Uh, well, this will conclude the business of the markup. Does the ranking member or any other member wish to be recognized before we adjourn? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Thank you. Go ahead, ranking member. You know, it it will you know come as no surprise that I'm a little disappointed uh, by the outcome of today's markup. I you know I value your partnership, Mr. Chairman, and I know much of this process has been out of your hands. Uh, but I also value the bipartisan tradition of this committee, that it, how it used to uh, what it used to embrace. I hope we can get back to that soon, and I hope that you can also heed our calls for committee action on behalf of the veterans struggling because of the crisis in Afghanistan. Uh, you claim earlier that all those calls were uh, insincere because of the committee hearing next week that, that has been in work for a while. A hearing on suicide prevention is undoubtedly important, but it is not the same as Republicans are asking for, which is a response to the president's failure in Afghanistan. The fact is that you think it, it is the same that it, say, that it is the same and provides me with that, which is a very serious misunderstanding of the extent to which I think our veterans and dis, are disheartened and demoralized right now by the tragic events of, past, of the past month. Republicans are calling for a meaningful action for veterans in need right now. We're not calling for this committee to check the box with a, with a previous scheduled hearing or any indirect related topic and then pat ourselves on the back and move forward. We truly need to deal with these veterans that are suffering right now. And trust me, I think all of us are feeling it in our district. Uh, we've got to do better. Uh, veterans deserve better. And with that, I yield back. I thank you for the time. Well, thank you, Ranking Member Bost. And uh, uh, I do look forward to uh, uh, your visit to California. I know you're in California now. Uh, You'll be coming to my district, and I really appreciate that act of goodwill uh, to see uh, the nation's one of the nation's fastest growing and largest uh, veteran cemeteries. And you and I together will uh, visit the Los Angeles VA together. Uh, uh, I understand fully uh, the minority's concern, all of our concerns about how our veterans are responding uh, to this uh, this long moment. Um, of the American withdrawal from Afghanistan. And as I said, I do believe that this markup uh, was on point, uh, far from being a distraction, it was the very essence of what needs to be done in terms of uh, meeting the needs of the veterans who, um, uh, the many, many veterans who may be having uh, varied and dramatic and sharp, re uh, sharp reactions uh, to uh, what they have witnessed in the media and uh, what they have uh, and the, the many relationships that they um, have built and formed and are still concerned with in terms of uh, their Afghan partners. Um, that being said, um, I do believe that next week's um, hearing uh, is very much on point. Um, it is not checking the box. Um, we do expect to uh, have the VA uh, respond to questions from both sides of the aisle about what is being done and what needs to be done. We, um, we do expect uh, our VSO partners to be also uh, present to report on what the, their members are also saying um, their members are experiencing. So uh, uh, ranking member uh, together uh, with all of the members on both sides of the aisle, 
I expect that uh, uh, it will be a robust hearing that uh, will plumb beneath the surface, uh, go beyond politics, and um, explore what needs to be done and, and uh, to hold the VA accountable for what should be done. Uh, with that, um, I thank everyone for their attendance, uh, and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.